Hello, everyone. Yay. Oh, I love that. Yeah, that's what my husband said when he saw it, too. <laughs> Just good. Good that he likes it because he sees it. <laughs> So let me know if you can see and hear me. It looks like it's all set up fine. So that's good. <laughs> uh, I am having to wear my hair up because I plugged in uh, my flat iron actually on Sunday. Sunday morning. Flat, I have had it for almost a year, maybe around a year or something like that. And um plugged it in and it blinked and just never did anything. It was always cool to the touch. So I have no flat iron, but I got it at Costco. So I did take it back to Costco and I got my money back. But of course, Costco does not currently have any flat irons. So I have to wait for Amazon to get me one. <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to be wearing my hair up then. <laughs> the problem with the A-line cut is that ew, it has to be straightened or else it looks bad. So good. Everyone can see and hear me that I know <laughs> I really like the flat iron. Although I, without it, I have lots of frizzies and um, yeah, <laughs> sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So I'm, this was a good day for it to work out. <laughs> Let's see. Um, well, you know, you don't have to. I have to. <laughs> Let's see. Um, there's, I think it's partly a personality thing, <laughs> Don and Rachel. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm hope I was hoping to my card up here with my notes and my little outline, but I don't want to cover up the chat. There we go. I'll cover up me. <laughs> so, all right. Good to see all of you here, and I think this is going to be a good topic, um, and definitely I'm not talking about this because I've got to all figure it out and get it right every day. <laughs> Let's just get that out of the way first. <laughs> talking about this because I know how often it's a problem, because it's very much a problem for me, and I have strategies, and they work but still I don't always do them or still sometimes the days break bad. Um, I know, <laughs> unfortunately I have searched, I have searched for the miracle solution and have not found it. It turns out that uh, it's hard work <laughs> that we just have to do. It's part of this gig that we signed up for. Um, yeah. Morning spoils the morning. <laughs> well, there's no changing that the fact that there are mornings and that our days start in the morning. Unfortunately, that's just, um, that's the way God made the world. So we got to roll with it. Um, they call it hard work because it's hard. <laughs> um, so yeah, and I think that a lot of times, you know, things get hard and we start looking for answers. We look for um, what's going to fix it. And we're kind of assuming that, that there's some kind of answer that will make it easy. And so we keep trying and trying or think that we're failing because it's hard, because we haven't found the easy way out. And sometimes there are easier mornings, right? So we've all had, hopefully, some good mornings where things flow and all that. So we're looking for ways to make that happen. Those good mornings happen all the time. But it turns out that those hard mornings, the bad mornings um, are going to happen. And the fact that they happen doesn't necessarily even mean that we're doing anything wrong. Yeah. Our, how our mornings go depend on the kids. So there are all kinds of factors because we might be having a bad day or we might be having a good day, but there's one child out of, you know, many and they have days too. And so there are lots of factors or how much sleep you got, whether or not you're sleeping through the night, um, 
Yes, bedtime for mama makes or breaks me. Exactly. How much sleep we're getting has a big impact on our ability to cope with normal life. Like it can be all normal. And one day you handle it fine, you know, you're rolling with the punches. And another day, the same kind of life happens, but it feels, you know, like molasses or like everything's breaking. Like it, it's the feel of it that's different and not even the actual day. So um, finding those ways to turn it around, but there are ways, but there has to always be the willingness to turn it around because the truth is that a lot of times we know that we should and we could turn it around and we don't. Um, at least that's <laughs> true for me. Um, and so that's why we need to repent. That's why repenting is part of our daily mantra, because that just shows us our neediness and our brokenness, that even when we know that it's our responsibility to turn things around, that we can through Christ, that we need to, we just decide to wallow in it or to sit just to plop down and keep ourselves stuck in it uh, or to let our kids who are maybe the one the one causing the problems or having the bad day where we kind of let them and we let them set the tone for the day instead of working up the energy and uh, I don't know chutzpah I don't know I don't know the word you know the oops to be the one setting the tone because it takes a lot of oomph, especially the more or the younger the kids are, the more oomph it takes to be the one setting the tone for the day instead of letting the kids set the tone. Um, so let's see, did you see that there's a poll here at the chat? You can click poll down there and take the poll. Um, so it's so a what trips you up and slows down the start to your day first. Not getting started myself, resistance from the kids, or random interruptions and circumstances. And um, this is pretty, you must not get, either uh, you have very not resistant kids, or it's just you have a really hard time getting started yourself. <laughs> Which it feels like if it's not one, it's one of the others, right? If uh, one might happen more often than the others, but more often than not, it's one of them, right? So um, is it still random if it happens every day? Well, is it the same thing happening every day? Or, you know, I kind of put random in there because it's something different every day, right? That's like one day it's this, another day it's that. So it's not like one thing you can peg down and address. It's more like first it's this, then it's that, and they don't seem related. How am I going to get on top of this, right? Because it's unpredictable what the thing is going to be today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yes, my child has resistance, but it's a bigger deal if I'm not ready, and that happens more. Right, so this summer, uh, the Scully sisters did a retreat on leadership. We decided leadership would be our topic because of these very kind of issues. Um, even if it's the kids who are having a bad day or the kids are being resistant or it's random circumstances, really it boils down to us and how we respond. So instead of reacting and just feeling like you're always putting out fires, you're playing that whack-a-mole game where something's always coming at you and you're just randomly whacking and never actually hitting and definitely never winning. Um, <laughs> kids, I hear kid sounds. I think it's happy. Um, instead of being in charge of ourselves first and then the situation, the demeanor, the tone of the house, the atmosphere. We just kind of are in reactive mode and instead of proactive, instead of choosing our response appropriately. And so that's really where we need to zero in because when we are kind of, um, 
building up, maybe it's like a force field. Uh, I know Rachel Jankovic calls it a bubble, <laughs> which I, I appreciate. I, I can get that because it seems like people pop the bubble. Um, and you know, I have this like this space or this, I've also called it a buffer where you feel like there's this, um, yeah, like a force field or something, a shield around you that sometimes, you know, your resist, your resilience is strong and things can happen and it doesn't throw you off. You can roll with it and handle it and still direct things the way you want. And then sometimes the bubbles popped there's no resilience, everything. So everything is just like grading directly on you instead of kind of happening kind of at, at a distance from you. Everything's like right here. <laughs> and so there are a, several things that we can do to help build our resistance. Um, and that's really where we need to start because that resilience, that buffer is also a way of giving us perspective because we have to be able to step back from the situation whatever it is if it's random circumstances or if it's kids having a hard time we have to be able to step back and look at it you know as a whole picture and look at it a little bit more objectively a little bit more you know not taking it super deeply personal but saying okay as the leader here, as the one in charge, what's my responsibility and how can I do that? Uh, yeah, herding cats, exactly. <laughs> um, so, right, so then we can look and we can say, what kind of strategies do I need? Do I need a way to call the kids back without losing it? You know, what are the situations that I have to figure out a strategy for? But first, how am I responding and how can I get that perspective and build that buffer? You need a bell, not a megaphone, because then you're still yelling <laughs> or you're still tempted to like, Rrr! or I am. So I have a bell. And so then I could just ring the bell. The bell has the same tone all the time. Um, and then it needs to not be my voice sometimes because sometimes I need that extra minute to say, okay, and then they're going to come. It's going to be okay. <laughs> Take a big deep breath and calm down. So finding those things that help. Mommy. Love. Oh, can I restore the, the audio book of this? Yes, you may. Okay. <laughs> you Show them your book. That's a good book. <laughs> okay seat belt in their chairs that's perfect um yes okay an autoimmune condition that lowers your tolerance for light and noise and lowers your endurance yeah so you have to figure out what's struggling to work with the chaos and what you know if it's the kids having a bad day yeah so you know it, being able to step back and say okay um my resilience or my buffer my endurance is going to be low today, so I need a plan B day. And to not try to push and act like I'm always on my A game. You know, we can come up with strategies like that when we can take a step back. And um, um, just think about it without having everything, you know, right on us all the time. And really what we need is, yes, <laughs> viable morning or another thing that we, minimum viable morning, another thing that we did in the interval intensive, if Dana White in the book spot in the background, uh, I have a group working through work the plan right now. And one of the things that we did was make uh, the ideal morning just to get it out there. And say, okay, this is, if everything was going my way, this is like what I picture the day going like. And just picture it, go into that imaginative, idealistic mode and get it out there. Then you can at least look and see, okay, so that's never going to happen. <laughs> and you can like get it out of your system and say, and just recognize, okay, that's an ideal. 
And I need to stop expecting that my ideal is ever going to happen and look for those little pieces of the ideal that do happen every day. You're never going to get all the ideal pieces in one day, but you know, when you know those things that are in your ideal day, maybe it'll help you notice this piece happened today and then that other piece happened the other day. So in the scheme of things, it adds up. And then um, a normal day, so you have the ideal day, then you have your normal day and that's like your if if this this and this happens it's a good day so my list today was um morning time and elementary lessons and phonics with this one which you know took less than 10 minutes and i have a book that i'm reading books and yeah. i'm at chapter six and she's reading the bob books so we're super excited about that so we had to make time to read a Bob book together. So, um, <laughs> yeah, what did Ma's morning, you're right, right? <laughs> Can I listen with it on the top? Yeah, that's fine. Careful of the cord. With your phones or not? No earphones. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, um, you have the normal day, which is, it's basically still your minimum viable day because you're looking at what are the priorities. And if the priorities happen, then it's a good day. Maybe not all of the things happen because most of the time, all of the things are not going to happen in a day. Even if you work really hard, if you work really hard to get all of the things in one day, you're just going to be super tired and crash the next day. Or at least that's what happens to me. So you need to have the realistic day, which is still minimum viable. This is just what's going to be, what are the priorities so that we can address those. Uh, yes, this will be, there will be a replay link later and I will also have it on YouTube when we're done. Um, so the ideal version, the normal day realistic priority plan, and then the bad day plan, the uh, bare minimum, the survival mode day, plan B, survival mode day. Um, what things really have to be, like what's your one thing? If this hap if everything falls apart, we're just going to make sure we do this. And maybe that's a read aloud time. Maybe that's audio books and coloring and drawing uh, so that you can take a nap. But usually they're going to be physical reasons why you're in that survival mode that you really can't overcome until you know you've addressed those physical needs or you know if it's learning disabilities or pregnancy or a baby who doesn't sleep or some kind of sickness like you have a cold you have something going on it's like you have to not try to push through that but have a plan for the days where that hits and for some people, that's going to happen more than others, and that's okay. That's where you are. And so you can say, okay, you can just knowingly, intentionally switch to that, that day's plan in your mind. And just even acknowledging, okay, this is not an A-game day. This is a survival day. And I'm going to choose to do that and be content with that today. And if... Um, you feel like, oh, but it always is. I can't get out of that survival mode. I'm never in an A game mode or whatever. Um, remember, it's perspective that we need. So stepping back and saying, well, okay, are my expectations realistic? So, um, you know, you can step back a little bit, but you also need perspective of other people in your life. So if that's a good friend, uh, that's a huge blessing to have a friend you know, the kind of doing life together friend who knows your kids, who knows you, who knows your situation and can give you advice or even just being able to talk it through. Because sometimes we don't even really realize what we're thinking or how we're feeling or what our options are until we're just talking it over. So having and making time for those friendships where you can just talk through everything and then have someone else who says, well, did you think about this? Or are you sure it's not this? Or really, you shouldn't be expecting this here. 
you know? And then also, of course, your husband. And I think it's pretty easy to discount our husband's opinion because we say, well, we are here all day. We're in the middle of it. We have all this information and details and he doesn't have the whole picture and he doesn't understand and, you know, yada, yada. He doesn't know all of the things that I know about a day. And, but the, the thing is, is that's actually uh, the perspective piece. So he has the perspective piece. He knows the kids and he knows you and he's not right in the thick of it. It's the same as talking with a friend. You're talking to someone who's not right in the thick of it. So you get a different perspective, which is exactly what we need. Exactly. Um, yes. Um, our husbands don't maybe don't know every single thing that happens in the day the way we do. And that gives them the bigger picture. Like you have, you have the picture of the minute details, but he can see the bigger picture because he's not bogged down in the details. Um, yes, <laughs> he's a vested interest. <laughs> so um, it's really helpful to get our husband's advice or even to have them ask questions and to not feel um, criticized or um, to take it as an offense if they start asking questions or making suggestions. But what we need is perspective. We need someone else's perspective, a little bit of the different angle, the different distance. And so we need to embrace that and ask for it and welcome it, be grateful. Um, so yes, and often, right, they're a different person, right? So they'll pick up on different things. They might have different priorities or different things that they notice, um, and that's good. You know, we, we need as many perspectives as we can get. So, um, yeah, I, my husband works from home, and uh, that was sanctifying because I realized that the story that I was telling in the day, you know, I'd tell him, oh, we had a bad, you know, math was bad, and I was complaining. Like my kid was complaining about the math and I was complaining to my husband about the kid. <laughs> but when he's working from home and he just happens to come up randomly during math or whatever, and he looks at me and says, are you okay? Yes, I'm okay. <laughs> Sorry. I was just actually about to lose it. You're right there. Actually. <laughs> so it helped him um, working from home and just coming up randomly gave me a more honest perspective about my own attitude and my own responses because I was telling myself I was doing fine and handling it fine when I wasn't. <laughs> Clearly not. So um, yes, we need to embrace their perspective even when it hurts or we don't, we don't like it. Um, so um, when the mornings, I think, I mean, uh, we focus on mornings because the mornings really set the tone for the day. Um, it's inertia, right? It talks with housework and stuff. We talk about entropy, which we're experiencing right now because this is week five of the term. So everything, work and the house and everything is fraying at the edges. But even in attitudes. <laughs> but um, inertia is, is that one of the laws of thermodynamics also? I'm mean, entropy is anyway, inertia, it's a thing and it's real like entropy. And so until it gets going until the motion, something puts it into motion, it's not going to go anywhere. Um, and we are the ones who have to get it rolling. So whether your morning starts at 8 or 9 or 10, or even if you don't even start until after lunch, like your starting time, whenever you get started, involves you starting things. And so I'm like, well, who's going to make me start? <laughs> like, well, it's what, like, this is what being a grown-up is. So it's actually just time to be a grown-up. Thank you. All right. <laughs> um, 
Yes, an object at rest tends to stay at rest. Well, isn't that funny? So if we're teaching from rest, are we not in motion? Um, different kind of rest. So teaching from rest does not mean letting inertia have its way. It doesn't mean just uh, having reading a novel on a couch or unless I feel like getting up, I'm not going to get up, right? Teaching from rest means not being calm. It means not being anxious or worried or overwrought. It means getting up and doing the things that need to be done. Um, and so it's our job to really start that day and not expect that it's the kids job to get themselves going in the morning but until like just think about how hard it is for you to get yourself going and for everyone else we can't expect of them what we don't do ourselves um right sometimes i'm in motion but not the right kind yeah that's that's true um right there is there's that balance between neglect and being the drill sergeant um, so how we get things started is important and that we get things started. They're both important. Um, so what are the things, yeah, what are the things that keep you in the inertia state? I experienced it this morning because, um, so I got up to do my couch to 5k program, kind of half-hearted running and I got up. And I got my tennis shoes on and everything. And I went downstairs and I got my phone because it has the app and my headphones. And I'm walking towards the door and couch. <laughs> Am I just going to, I don't know, I need to rest before running or something. I don't want to run, so I'm not going to. And I sit there, check Instagram. And I'm like, okay, just turn it off. Just turn it off. I don't want to. Stand up. I don't want to. I'm going to stand up. I'm just going to get out that door. I did, and I went and did it, and I came out, get, did the run, came back, and like plop on the front step, because I know there are kids up by this time inside. Eh. <laughs> it was a literally couch, except that, no, I did not 5K it. It was couch to 1M, <laughs> which is pretty good. Um, so it's, I mean, and that sort of thing trips us up all the time, doesn't it? Not just with exercise or whatever, anything we're supposed to be doing. It's like, I am just not going to. And we've all experienced that. And so that needs to um, help us give our kids grace when they're like that. Because I know I tend to really crack down on that with my kids. And part of the reason I crack down on my kids with that is because that's what I do. And I'm mad at myself for doing it, but I'm going to take it out on them. And it's like, I'm going to help you be better than me. It doesn't actually work that way. Uh, all they see is that this is something you can do when you're a grown up. <laughs> right? That's not the lesson we want them to know. Um, so we, it has to start with ourselves. We have to start with ourselves. We have to be responsible for ourselves before we can teach responsibility. And recognizing that is the first step of um, taking the next step and being responsible and saying, okay, well, I rec this is what it looks like in my child and I'm angry about that or I'm upset about that or I need to change that. Like point that finger right back here and say, okay, this is what needs to change. And of course, prayer and scripture reading, going to church and getting that you know, perspective there, that refueling so that we can repent and even rejoice in our repentance and moving forward. That rejoicing part is the propelling forward. So you repent, you turn from, it must be a catechism answer because I, <laughs> you turn from your wicked ways, you turn from the wrong choices, um, hate and forsake them. And instead, rejoice. And that's the forward momentum because that's with gratitude, with knowing this is where I'm supposed to be. And that's not even necessarily 
going into, you know, high octane, super productive mode. Like you don't have to go couch to 5K. You don't have to go from zero to 60. You just have to get up and do the right next thing. You just have to even turn and smile at the child that's there with you. You know, it's serving and loving those around us and doing our duty that, um, and, and rejoicing in that. And so that is um, moving forward. That's our forward momentum. So when you're an adult, you can make your own bad decisions. <laughs> So we have to show them how it's possible to make the right decisions too, I guess. Um, yeah, that's okay. I have a teen. I know. I can see it in his eyes. The, well, you're not, you know, you're not living up to the measure that you're measuring out to us, right? But that's, that needs to cut deep and that needs to affect how we're measuring the kids. And, you know, so the standards we're holding them to, because if we're holding ourselves to a lower standard than we're holding them to, it's going to collapse in an ugly, ugly way. So we have to hold ourselves to a higher measure than we're holding them to. And um, that doesn't mean expecting nothing out of them, which would be the easier, short term easier. We want to take that responsibility in the short term so that we have long-term fruit instead of short-term ease and long-term hardship. So um, it is September. Yeah, it's that I think I said it somewhere else. Like this week four, week four of a term is when it all hit, like all that start strong momentum fizzles out and you're like, oh yeah, this is actually hard. Um, so yes, those things that we notice and we crack down on them are often the problems we have ourselves. So it's actually ourselves that we need to look at and say, okay, they are reflecting what they're seeing, which is me. And so that's what I need to repent of um, in order to move forward. And then, you know, you are forgiven after you repent. And so we are able to move forward and not wallow in it and stay there. So, um, Another one of those little quick strategies is for getting that perspective, for turning things around, for reminding myself of the standards I should be holding myself to, all those things, keeping the vision, um, remembering what's actually important, which is more the way that we're talking to each other instead of the, con you know, who was king of England or the next president or whatever. It's about um, our relationship to each other and our world and to God. And knowing history or science or math and all of that is helpful because it's learning about God and his world and the way he does work and the way he has worked. and. Um, exercises our brains so that they are stronger and more capable and so keeping first things first and that the way that I am like fruitfulness looks like something and God tells us what fruitfulness looks like and it doesn't it that it that list does not include knowing the names of all the presidents right <laughs> like that's a good that's a good thing but that's not the fruit that needs to be growing here right now in myself first. It's love, joy, peace, patience. Like those are the things that we need to see growing in ourself and then spilling out, you know, seeds bearing fruit in our children as well. So um, one of those strategies to get perspective, I call it a prep sheet. And it's pretty much just a page and it lives in my morning time binder or on my clipboard or sometimes I'll write out a quote or copy from it. But it's just a page, although I have multiple, I have lots of them, um, that has particular Bible verses that I find convicting 
and perspective giving and um, quotes, a lot of quotes either about what education is or about our role as a mom or the role of the home, quotes that keep me focused in and zeroed in that basically give me the kick in the rear to get off my rear <laughs> and do the right thing. So uh, if you click the green button here, <laughs> assuming that a child got on Abby's <laughs> chat, <laughs> happened, this happened to me. Um, so if you click the green button, um, if you click the green button, it takes you to a post that tells you about, you know, it's the same topic and about my prep sheets and it has a free one that you can download. So there should be somewhere a green button that says beat morning blahs. And, um, so that has, Oh, thanks Don. Don just put the link in there. So if you can't see the button, the link is in the chat box. Um, so you could get a free prep sheet, one of mine right there, and you can make your own because it's just a page that has um, very rich and meaningful and motivating short passages and quotes that just are that, that kick in the pants that we all need sometimes. So yes, yes, the fruit of the spirit for sure. Um, so go over and grab that. That's your next thing and be watching. There's going to be another post kind of on this same similar topic on Thursday and the replay link for this video will be in that post. And, um, I think this is something we just have to keep talking about because it's real, it's real life. And we need to know that we're not alone and that we can need to have realistic expectations for ourselves and our kids and we need those kicks in the pants. Uh, so <laughs> sometimes I have to give, I have to be the one to give it, you know, right by writing the blog post or whatever, the email. And it's like, okay, this is for me. Maybe someone else will find it useful, but I'm writing this because I know something up here and it's not what I'm actually doing. So um, that's, what we're, that's what I hope to be doing and I hope that it's helpful and you can expect to see more of that <laughs> these next few weeks. So um, yeah, this was fun chatting with you all and we'll do it again next week.